We're coming to order as we begin our hearing to examine opportunities to advance renewable energy and energy efficiency efforts here in this country. I want to start by acknowledging really the very significant progress that we've seen in renewable energy in recent years. We've seen the costs of many technologies, whether it's wind, whether it's solar, or something else, decline uh, considerably. Many renewables are now cost competitive without subsidies in certain parts of the country, and that's leading to greater investment. In 2018, U.S. corporations broke previous records by signing contracts for 8.6 gigawatts of wind and solar production. We've also made great progress on energy efficiency. This is also another good story and one that unfortunately isn't told near often enough. According to the American Council for an Energy Efficient Economy, energy efficiency has helped reduce energy use by about 50 percent relative to what it would have been had 1980 patterns continued. These reductions are saving Americans. They're saving them approximately $2,500 per year. That makes a difference for our families. We're making progress, but I think we know that we've got plenty of areas that we can continue to improve and increase efficiency. Some of the most impressive work, and I, I'm going to totally brag on, on my state here and the innovation and the pioneering that we're seeing coming out of the state, and particularly at the Cold Climate Housing Research Center. For example, the center is designing and building homes that use 80 percent, 80 percent less energy than comparable homes that are being built without their assistance. So think about what that means in a, in a cold place, uh, oftentimes pretty dark, um, to, to recognize those kinds of energy efficiencies. And then when you compound that with the extraordinarily high cost uh, of, of, of heating, um, and just power generation in the state of Alaska. We are really making a difference to families and communities. So I'm pleased to be able to welcome back the center's chief program officers, uh, Bruno Grano. Uh, Bruno is going to tell us more about the good work that they're doing in the Arctic and rural Alaska. We're also joined by Mr. Daniel Simmons, who is the Assistant Secretary of Energy for the Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy. Good to have you back before the committee. Uh, Dr. Martin Keller is the director of the National Renewable Energy Lab. We love having our, uh, our, our lab directors here, and we appreciate very much the fact that you were up in, in Fairbanks for National Lab Day. Uh, Mr. Dan Conant is the founder and president of Solar Holler. We welcome you. And Dr. Jason Hartke is the president of the Alliance to Save Energy, an, an organization that many of us are familiar with. So thank you all for being here today, ready to talk about the work and the important work that you're doing as it relates to increasing efficiency and deploying cleaner technologies. So I'm going to provide committee members just another little, um, some of the little highlights that make a difference in, in, again, a state like ours where our energy costs are so high. Community of Yakutat. In, in southeast, the top north southeast uh, Alaska, 600 people. I think that that's a little bit low. Um, fishing community, no access by road. But in 2013, they, they decided we've, we've got to get control of our costs because the, the cost of food in the grocery store was so high because of, of what it cost them to just keep the lights on in the store and keep the freezer frozen. And um, so they pieced together some federal and state funding. They invested over 600000 in efficiency upgrades at the at the local uh, school, at the courthouse, and the city office. At the elementary school alone, they invested nearly 200000 to upgrade all of their lighting to LED. And, and what they're looking at in savings for that little community is about $70,000 a year. That, that buys them another teacher. That buys them a teacher and an aide. So in that community, it is a huge difference. I also tell the story very often of a beautiful little fishing community called Pelican in southeastern Alaska. Uh, again, pretty small. Uh, used to be about 100 year-round residents there. Uh, but what was happening in, in Pelican is even though it was a fishing community, the fishermen were just bypassing Pelican because the ice that they would take to, to keep their, their fish cool and fresh, the ice cost them too much money because they were making, their power generation was coming to them by, by diesel power generation. And so you got to put the diesel in the, 
in the boat, get it down there, and, and you, can't, you can't even afford to have ice. Well, if you don't have ice, you don't have a community. So what they then did, small hydropower from Pelican Creek uh, that had made power possible since the 1940s, they, they, they looked to, to address the, the reality of that small hydro, so they invested in new penstock, new turbines, modern powerhouse, but that then allows one local family to start a commercial fish buying and processing business five years ago, five employees. This summer, that little processing company has 24 people. So keep in mind, this is a community of 100. So a quarter of the people there are now working there. They've signed a 25-year lease on an old crab plant with plans to expand and, and grow further. They anticipate shipping out a million dollars worth of fish this summer. And all of that is made possible because they had clean, renewable hydropower and then the continued investment in making that resource more abundant and more affordable. So when we talk about the, uh, the, the small incremental um, innovation, and, and, and again, small hydro, is many, many would say, is not that innovative, but it can transform communities. It can make them sustainable. It can allow people to live and work where they want to. So those are stories, just a couple stories from my hometown. I would venture to say that in every one of yours, you have small examples where you're putting families to work, you're allowing a community to be more sustainable. So our challenge here is to ensure that the costs of new technologies continue to decline and to make sure that upfront costs don't stall out or need um, or lack that beneficial investment. So. We've got great experts here today. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on what we can be doing to move to that next level. I'll turn to my colleague, Senator Manchin, here, but looking forward to a very interesting hearing this morning.